DaVinci Resolve has changed a lot over the past couple of years. Resolve 16 added the cut page, Resolve 17 added a bunch of effects and transitions, and all that everyone ever talks about is the new updates of DaVinci Resolve, but no one ever really takes the time to go back and see where we came from. So, on this computer I have tracked down a few older versions of DaVinci Resolve. So the first version of DaVinci Resolve that we're starting off with is 12. 12 is probably the oldest DaVinci Resolve version that is closest to what DaVinci Resolve is like now. Alright, let's fire up DaVinci Resolve 12, and wow, coming from 18.6, this looks actually very different. And this is what it looks like, so you can see that it's not that responsive. So I made a cut, I'm gonna do a bit of a editing here. Okay, the position doesn't go past 1920. Actually, DaVinci Resolve now still has this problem, but it's a lot less problematic, because I think in the newer version of DaVinci Resolve, the position stops way later. And zoom doesn't go past 4? Wait, what's this? Oh, look at that. That's interesting. Of course the default font is Times New Roman. I wish I could type 200 words a minute. Also, there are no effects, so that's great too. Like literally, if I go into open effects, there's nothing. Also, there's no cut page or fusion page. And I'm gonna try rendering it out now. Where do you type in the name? Oh, there. Wow, this is a lot less intuitive. Let's renter. So, that is what it was like to use DaVinci Resolve 12 back in 2015. So now, I'm gonna take a step back to DaVinci Resolve 11.3. Now because DaVinci Resolve 12 introduced a brand new user interface that has a design language that is still used in DaVinci Resolve today, DaVinci Resolve 11 actually had a completely different UI, so we'll show you. 2014. Alright, um, wow, look at this. It looks completely different. See, wow, look at that. What? That doesn't work. work. I think that it's pretty obvious that I was going to have many, many problems with this software because I didn't know how to use it. And more importantly, I didn't know that I didn't know how to use it. What about screenshot? Nothing works? How do you add clips? Does it only work with airy clips or something? And then finally, after hours of research, I found the problem. Now, basically what I had to do is I had to go to preferences, media storage, and then add my drive. And now I can access these clips. All right, let's try and edit with DaVinci Resolve 11. Now let's put it in there. What? What the f- Great timeline using select clips. Yes, but you can see it is kind of working. But this was back when DaVinci Resolve was solely meant to be a color grading program, which just had some video editing functionality. Let's try and add some text here. This background thing here in the normal text thing has not changed at all. Also, transform is pan and tilt, not X and Y. And there's also no pitch and yaw. All right, let's render, I guess. And you can see there's settings for basic, intermediate, and advanced. All right, so now I'm filming this in four up uh, dead. And also this camera is- All right, now let's move on to DaVinci Resolve 10. All right, this is DaVinci Resolve 10 from 2013. Let's see what happens. What's really weird about this is that now there are five pages. I'm surprised DaVinci Resolve 10 still has editing features. I think there's a lot less buttons here now. Oh wow, the default font has changed from Times New Roman to Times New Roman Bold. Also, the shadow is turned on by default and there's no extra s settings for shadow. Yep, these are the OG transitions. Oh, there's a reverse button for a cross dissolve? The amount that you can actually pan has gone down from 1920 to 1440, so. And then the tilt has gone down to 1080, so. It's a real problem if you're trying to do extreme zooms. The deliver page really changed a lot. Look at the way this looks now. I'm just gonna do this on one take. Alright, now, finally, let's move on to DaVinci Resolve 9. After weeks of searching and searching on the internet, this is the oldest version of DaVinci Resolve that I could find. Oh wow, this does look a little bit different. The orange color does look a little bit lighter too. Oh, DaVinci Resolve 9 doesn't have an edit tab. Oh no. So conform. Oh, I guess this is the timeline. There we go, see that? This is editing in DaVinci Resolve 9. At this point, we're 10 versions behind, and the editing capabilities that DaVinci Resolve 9 has is very, very limited. Wow, the keyframes don't even work. <laughs> what? I mean, at least you can do super basic editing now. Do they have text? Oh my god. 
They have a few transitions and that's it. Oh look, multi-track editing. There's also no inspector. There, there's the transform that you have. It's in the color page. See that? Look at that. What? It's not even working as transform because it's just black behind it. Can't see the video that's below it. <laughs> I'm probably using it completely wrong. So yeah, that was what it was like to use older versions of DaVinci Resolve. Now version 8 was actually the first version to be released on Windows, with older versions only being supported on Macs. And the versions before that only really ran on specialized hardware, so it would actually be impossible for me to use versions even older. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you loved it, please subscribe, and I'm gonna see you guys in the next video.